Okay, right content, right audience at the right scale. Our next speaker can tell us from personal experience how to get the mix of those three right. Please welcome the CEO and founder of Taboola in the USA, Adam Singolder. Adam. And then I welcome myself. Uh, my name is Lars. I'm from uh, Welt N24. Everybody, and uh, thanks for joining us, especially around uh, lunchtime. Yeah, that's for Lars. That's yours. I you have it. All right, so I think from our perspective, um, you know, a lot of things are changing. I think the publishing business has changed a lot in the past few years. It used to be much simpler. People used to read content on a big screen on a desktop. We used to search for content. Most content used to be written by reporters, and now we have native advertising, video is growing, Facebook is trying to have everything read, you know, read in a Facebook environment, Snapchat. So everything became a lot more complicated and fragmented, but we still have to drive growth for our business, driving revenue, engagement, and audience. So we're not going to cover all of that today, but we're hopefully going to touch on some of those things. Um, so Lars, uh, great having you here. Thank you. Uh, so just before we kick off the more uh, interesting jargon, uh, maybe you mind sharing a little bit about Develt and uh, introduce the company. Yeah, hopefully you, you all are aware of Welt. Um, the Welt was uh, founded as a newspaper in 1946, so we are, we are old. <laughs> we have our 70th birthday this year, but we are also um, a very innovative uh, a company in the field of digital. So in 1995, we have been the, one, the first one uh, in Germany uh, as a major newspaper on the internet. In 2009, we invented the digital, a digital paid model for journalistic content. And um, we have uh, a lot of different products. One product which is really successful also in the, in the, app, in the app market is our tablet app, uh, also uh, concerning revenues. And in 2013, we acquired N24, a uh, well-established TV station in, uh, in Germany. And uh, now we bring it all together. So we have print, we have TV, and we have digital, and we will merge it all into one. And also, when you're thinking about you know, this change in this industry um, and how you, you, know, you have to still find growth for the company in a much different internet and web, what are the key challenges you, you're facing or that keeps you up at night? Yeah, I mean, uh, I think for the next year, it's, it's really the most important thing to merge both things. And I mean, uh, it's really crazy. Some, somebody say, say that we are crazy because we are renaming an established TV station. N24 will be renamed into Welt uh, in, the, in the next year. And currently, we are building a new website, site, a new web destination, and also new apps for Welt and N24. And um, as a the way that people um, work and the way that people consume content has dramatically changed. We are in the middle of the digital transformation and it's not only the case for, for product or um, for development, it's also the case for the editors that work now very agile. And uh, we have to face that uh, uh, the, the way that people consume content has dramatically changed and that's something that we try to address with our new destination. And in terms of initiative, any, any specific initiatives that, that you're working on and you think um, other publishers can learn from? Well, I mean, I think we have, we have of course, uh, we are facing the, the, the same issues or the, the same challenges all, but um, uh, one, one of the key things is that uh, advertising is completely changing. Advertising is evolving in something new. I mean, display is not really attra attractive anymore, and so we're looking into new opportunities. Right. And... Um and I think a lot of people in the past few years have been spending time thinking about native advertising. And I, mean, I think there's, there's a lot of conversation about data, about native, about personalization. I wanted to pick one of them to start and uh, native advertising and ask, what the heck is native advertising to you? Well, I think it's a, it's a great <laughs> opportunity, but if you ask 100 people, you will get 100 different answers. What is native advertising? So from my point of view, I differentiate between customized native advertising, which means that you really have content and you connect the content to the brand, but the brand itself is not part uh, of, of the story. And then you have the native integration of customer content, which is a kind of content marketing. And I think both are great ways for great opportunities for, for uh, new revenues in advertising. Right, and I can tell you in the U.S., um, and I don't know how to compare what's the gap and who is ahead of whom, but 
I've met about 50 publishers in the US and I asked them the same question. And then I met brands and advertisers. And then I met investors and asked people what is native. And as you say, Lars, uh, you know, you ask 10 people, you get 10 answers about what is native. One thing that I think is an interesting thought about it is that for the most part, publishers define native as like the BuzzFeed model. I write a content, it's hosted on my site, and I promote it, and that's like a high impact experience. But the challenge is that it's not driving so much scale and revenue to publishers uh, to replace display advertising that's not working so much. And on the flip side, we're seeing companies like Facebook that present native in a different way, and for them, native is as long as it's in the feed, that's native advertising. And when you click on a sponsored content on Facebook, we all clicked on something, they send you away from Facebook. It's, it's not staying on Facebook, and that's to them okay. And Facebook last year generated $16 billion from this native advertising engine. So we're constantly thinking about, you know, as you say, it's separating between two types of native. The one that's you know, sort of hosted on my site, BMW came to me, they wanted to create a series of content with me, fantastic. But BMW is also spending tens of millions of dollars a year promoting content they already have on Facebook. So how can publishers attack both of those things, get more budgets and drive scale for the business and not be limited only to one type of native? So that's just something that we're seeing and I, um, I think it's gonna be interesting you know, times to see how it evolves in the industry. Will publishers be okay recommending other people's content that they sell directly like Facebook. Um, how do you, when you work now with brands on, on native advertising, do they care about any metrics? Yeah, I mean, uh, I, ha I had a lot of discussions uh, starting. I mean, the US market and the UK market is much more um, uh, developed uh, concerning native advertising. I had a lot of discussions, even on board level, with big companies in Germany and tried to, un to make them understand that it's really a different story, story that we're not talking about um, only CTAs. I mean, that does not mean that there can't be a CTA included, but it's not about counting clicks. What is CTA? Uh, call to action. Oh. I mean, it means just that they, you know, when I said we make a native, a great native campaign for you, which is really fitting to your brand, and they asked me, okay, how much registrations do I get for it? And I said, okay, that's not the story. It's about brand awareness, and it's about getting engagement with the content and to connect over the content to the brand. So how do you measure engagement? What is it, time or what is For example, you can measure the time, time on page. Um, you, can, you can also measure if the people... Um, uh, uh, leave the site after the article, um, and I think th that, that the relation um, of, an, of a really interesting content to a brand is giving much more brand awareness than any clicking banners and blinking banners around, around the content. I'm curious, how many people in the audience have done anything related to native, either as a publisher or as an advertiser? So at least half. Um, how many of you have done something that was more custom content look-alike? So you created content with a brand, uh, you hosted it on a publisher site. Who bought anything on Facebook? Yeah. So um, interesting stats. Um, and we see similar. I think that the biggest opportunity is to indeed redefine Native as a combination of this high impact thing, but also look at what opportunities publishers have to tackle this multi-billion dollar social budgets that today go to social platform versus going to uh, develop. Um, switching gears to another big topic, I think, this year, so a lot of um, people speaking about data. Uh, I think people spoke about data for a long time, and it's always nice to see nice graphs, but I'm always asking myself, what can you do with those graphs? Uh, so I think now it's coming back again, and people are speaking about data and personalization. Um, what's your thought about, what is personalization? Is there anyone that's doing a good job? You think using data to personalize? If you're going to say Facebook, it's going to be a problem. Are you going to say Facebook? Uh, uh, well, uh, it's a good question. No, I mean, you know, looking at, at um, paid content provider like Netflix or e-commerce shop like Amazon, they are already, uh, I think, very far for their business uh, in, in, pe in personalization. I think for publishers, the challenge is to find the right mix between curation, implicit and explicit personalization means the things that, that you really have to know, uh, things that you have to provide to people even if it's not their preferences because it's news, and things that, that you provide because of user behavior, and things that you provide because uh, the user has implicitly t uh, t told you, I want to know something about football or specific sports. And this mix, I think, is, is very important for the content, but 
it's not only about the personalization of content, it's also about the personalization of experience. And I think that's something when we are building now a new destination, mobile first, of course, but you know, what, what does it really mean? It means that the content maybe looks different on a mobile phone than on a desktop. Right, and like, interesting stat I can give you. We, we now serve about 10 billion recommendations every day uh, all around the world to about 800 million people a month. And we were curious how many people ever tweet or ever share something on Facebook, ever. Um, because, you know, I'm, not, I'm sure you've seen that when you go to many publishers, there's so many sharing buttons now. There's at the bottom, on the right, at the top. Like a third of the page is now sharing buttons. So I was curious, you know, how many people actually use it? And um, I'm not sure if you would be surprised or not if, if how many of you have actually think to yourself, when's the last time you went to an article page and you clicked to tweet something on Twitter or you share something on Facebook? So uh, according to what we've seen, between 8 to 12% of people ever use it which means that the majority of people sharing buttons is a distraction. It's, a noise, it's annoying them as they're trying to consume the content. Meanwhile, most publishers are keep adding more and more sharing buttons. So I agree with Lars. I mean, I think the big step ahead for publishers as we're thinking about data and personalization should be around, if I never tweeted something, take it off. If I don't use comments, take it off. And continuing this line of thought could improve the experience, the revenue, the audience, all the metrics we, we care about. Facebook, a friend, an enemy, or a frenemy? Well, I would say Facebook is a very important content channel for us. <laughs> so uh, we are using uh, instant articles. 100% uh, of our articles are also instant articles. We are also part of Google AMP. Um, so I think you know, the, the, the answer is you have to be there where the user is, and we want to be where the user is, and that's why we really look into every new movement, and we want to provide the best user experience, and honestly, that is if you provide the content where the user is. So, I mean, it makes no sense from my point of view to try to take them away from something they obviously enjoy. We try to, to provide our content in the best way, and that's um, using Facebook, for example. But do you think publishers should give all of their content to Facebook, some of their content to Facebook? How should we think about, you know, I, I agree with you, I think there's a big opportunity of awareness, because if some of your audience is on a different platform, you should, to some extent, be there. But, how, you know, you have companies like the Washington Post, owned by Bezos, who are 100% in, and then you have people that are more exploring, and people that are not doing it at all. Do you have any, any opinion about it? The uh, honest answer, I really do not know today. I mean, the thing is that we, will, we are part of it, we are using it, and uh, I totally believe that, that there are ways of monetization for it. Currently, we start, and it's definitely not what we are looking for, uh, look, uh, if you if you uh, going into the numbers, but I think uh, that we cannot say we are not part of it. Yeah? And of course, you know, I cannot, I cannot give you the answer uh, if we have to, to say, okay, it's only 50% uh, or 30%. But on the other hand, you know, we have premium content, means paid content. And of course, we can't give the paid content for free on these platforms. Right. Yeah, and, and I think also that's, that's sort of my opinion too. I mean, I think we have to experiment and participate in all these platforms. Uh, but I think most people consider Facebook instant article as a monetization threat because they may make less money. Well, actually, I think the biggest threat is audience, because when I click on instant article, a New York Times article looks exactly the same like any other type of article. Everything looks the same. And it means that our brand equity and power potentially over time is at risk. So I think today there's a monetization question, but if these platforms really succeed, how does our business look like in two years or three years or four years? So I think there have to be a balance between how much we're experimenting with that and how much we keep to ourselves so we can still communicate directly with consumers. Uh, so I guess we'll see how, how that evolves uh, in the next few years. All right, so last topic I have on my list, we're trying to cover a bit of everything, is uh, I can tell you from our, from our business about 52, 53% of the business is mobile. So completely visible in a small screen. Mobile is, it used to be uh, mobile first, now soon it's gonna be mobile only, and all of our business will become small uh, screen. What's your, thought, you know, what's your thoughts on, on mobile? Um, anything unique that you've seen there? Uh, mistakes that you've seen, things that work for you really well uh, that you can share? 
Well, I mean, basically, uh, I can remember when I was in a different industry, in the recruiting industry some years ago, and uh, for, for us was mobile alre already reality. The most of the companies told me that their career page was not uh, mobile optimized, and it's still today the case. And um, looking at our audience, I can say for N24, we currently have two, two uh, web pages still. We have N24 and we have Weld. And in N24, we have 60% uh, of mobile traffic. Yeah, so. Definitely, what I can say is that uh, users uh, have a different behavior. Uh, in, in, in many cases, it has also to do with the video that is uh, the video consumption has exploded uh, on Welt and N24 in the last year. But of course, you see, uh, uh, you see a difference between mobile uh, video usage and uh, the video usage on, on desktop. But I think it's just a question of time. Is video and mobile working? Is that, is that a good experience? Uh, I think it's, it's today. Well, it depends really on connection and access. Um, I think if you look to the video content that, that, that we mostly provide, I think we have to do a better job in the future because, you know, we have to think more about vertical portrait formats. We have to think about shorter videos. And that's the same, by the way, for the advertising industry that is still yeah. giving us uh, the spots they're producing basically for TV. And I think we have really to work on it, but I believe that um, video works also on mobile. It's just maybe a question of time, uh, what, what, uh, what is the share? Yeah, yeah I mean, I, I think mobile monetization is a big question, so hopefully video will work really well, and uh, native will work really well. And between video and native, we can make mobile as strong, if not stronger, than desktop uh, used to be. So we'll have to see about that as well. So we touched on everything. We touched on native, and about audience, about video, about mobile. Uh, we have a few minutes left. Do you have anything you want to show or we talk? No. No? Um, so any question, anything we didn't talk about, anything you want to ask us? Hi, uh, this is uh, Srini from Vikatan, India. Um, I just want to know, after Facebook Instant Articles, you say 100% of your articles are on Facebook Instant Articles. What kind of uh, uh, referrals were you getting from Facebook into your website or into your mobile site or apps for that matter um, uh, when you were not on Instant Articles and how has that affected the referral? So the, has the traffic on your, which is coming into you, has it been affected because of instant articles? And if so, what is the trade-off? And tomorrow, I'm sorry, just a supplementary question. When the uh, instant articles hopefully get monetized at some point in time, are you going to be able to programmatically add that to your supply? Or is it going to be just Facebook doing it and you're getting a portion of the revenue? Well, a part of the question you, <laughs> you have to put for Facebook, but um, I can tell you that that we see uh, the total volume of, of social traffic has increased for Weld. Um, of course, we, we see a shift uh, that the, the traffic that we are getting directly from social is uh, shifting to instant articles. Anything else would be a surprise. Um, Facebook is also working on some things that I, I think I cannot uh, talk about here, but definitely they are also thinking about how they can get a reference back to, uh, to, the, to the page directly. And monetization, well, I mean, we are at the beginning. Um, we started, and so uh, we just joined uh, in the end of last year, so I have two months uh, where I see some revenues. It's definitely not what we are looking for currently, but, you know, I believe that, that this will be something that evolves. Okay, we're up to uh, time there now, so can I ask us, please, to thank uh, our final two speakers for this morning.